Hello and welcome back to the Stacey West podcast or YouTube channel, wherever it is that you're currently watching or listening to me right now. We are in a really good run of form, as I'm sure everybody watching or listening to this will very much know. And our next game ah, it could be a six-pointer if things start going uh, even better for us, because we are facing Stevenage at Central Bank on a Saturday afternoon. Stevenage, the team who are currently sat in sixth place. And to talk all things Stevenage, I'm joined by Pat from the Borough Pod. Pat, I mean, I just said there, you are in sixth place. You're a newly promoted side. I mean, what on earth has gone right? It's been great, hasn't it? Yeah, we've managed to keep the momentum of last season, keep the majority of the squad together and build on it with some loanies in like Burns and uh, leaned a little bit on Steve Evans' old, uh, you know, contacts, getting in players like Kane Hemmings and that. And it's bulked up the squad that last year had a, a patch where we struggled with injuries, which is something I know you're very familiar with. Um, mm-hmm. We've got real good strength and depth in the kind of central midfield and the, the striking areas, which is really important, I think. Yeah, it's... Uh... You know, you've you've obviously been able to have a really good season, you know, regardless of any injuries. And like you say, that depth has obviously very much helped you out in, in certain areas. Um what is it a surprise to see, you know, from a Stevenage fan's point of view, is it a surprise to be seeing you guys so high up in the table? Where would you have put yourself at the start of the season if you were doing a prediction? My lightly giddy over optimistic preseason <laughs> was 10th. Um, and really my like kind of baseline expectation was if we're closer on points to the playoff places than we are to the relegation zone, that's a successful season for a first season in League One, uh, or back in League One, I should say. The last time we had our first season in League One, we finished sixth. So, you know, the, the, the bar was there and it's a possibility that you can be up this high, but I wasn't expecting quite that level of um, success given... You know, we struggled over the line a little bit towards the back end of last season. Um, but no, it's been a delight. And uh, the output from Jamie Reid has been a particular surprise over the last kind of season, season and a half. Like there was a point, the season we nearly got relegated from League Two, we were discussing like who we keep and who we let go in the summer. And everyone was just like, yeah, Jamie Reid, he's all right. He's a squad player. He's not like an established, important first team guy. And, how that has turned around since then is uh, just scoring bag balls. And it's been great to see that upturn in his productivity because the side really needed it. Why do you think that upturn has occurred? Is that uh, Steve Evans' tactic simply working for Jamie Reid as a player? Or is it just that he's somehow managed to obviously kind of improve and get a run of games and show what it is that he could maybe always do? I think it's more down to personal development in this case. So, when he was first in the side, his first touch was kind of ropey and he, he did a lot of running down blind alleys and losing it to the first defender and wasn't like seeing the game with vision. He always had really great work rate and pressed a lot and kind of, you know, was always nipping at people's heels, but that end product wasn't there when he got himself into shooting positions. The shooting wasn't particularly clinical. And this season particularly, we've just seen his first touch much improved, his close control much improved and the shooting much better when he gets there as well. Now, he will hit it straight at the keeper's chest from three yards five times before he scores from a ridiculous angle. He's had that sort of um, season, but he's almost better when he doesn't have time to think and he just acts instinctively and we've seen a lot of that this year. Well, it's it's funny because, you know, you have got one of the, I mean, is he? Am I right in saying he's currently joint top goal scorer in the league along with Alfie May and Devante Cole? You know, you've yeah, got totally this, great. you've got this incredible goal scorer. But in terms of sort of if you're ranking the league on table by goal scored, you're pretty kind of mid table. I mean, upper mid table, sure, but you're pretty sort of mid table. Is it, you know, is there kind of an issue with sort of creating chances as a whole? 
in games because I'm also aware that I believe Steve Evans has mentioned that you guys have had a kind of a lack of clinicality in recent games. Is is that something that you've struggled with over the season or? I'd say more it's come down to squandering chances rather than struggling to create them. Now, we've okay. had a sludgy game like against Wickham a couple of games ago where it was 1-0 and there was about three shots in the whole game. But yeah. in general, it's been more like it was against Cambridge where we made a lot of chances, put in a lot of crosses, but mm. didn't convert as many as we needed to. And that leads you to dropping points you shouldn't and leads you to really nervous kind of last half hours a lot of the time. So, yeah, yeah. We've, we've we've made life more difficult for those, ourselves than we should have at times by not capitalising on those good spells that you have. And that's the difference between being sixth and being third, you know, at the sharp end of the table. Well, of course it does, absolutely. Or it could mean the difference between you being sixth or you being seventh behind a Lincoln City side. Okay, mm. I better not get carried away too early. Um, <laughs> I, so we, I've, I've sort of already mentioned um, tactics. You know, how do you guys play as a tactical style? How are you expecting to maybe line up in terms of a formation or shape? I mean, formations are a little bit outdated now, but in terms of like a shape on the pitch on Saturday today, how are we kind of expecting that to look? Sure. Um, yeah, so we started the season playing kind of 3-5-2 with mm -hmm. three centre-backs and then two very aggressive full-backs, uh, particularly if you look at like the Portsmouth game when they were right up on the edge of the opposition area all the time. That mm -hmm. has morphed as we've gone through the season and we're now more kind of 4-4-2 diamonds uh, predominantly with yeah. Jordan Roberts as an attacking midfielder floating behind the two strikers and then... Mm -hmm. The myriad of midfield we've got Louis Thompson, Paul Stokowski, uh, Nick Freeman, and yeah. uh, Burns, who's on loan from City, um, as the kind of deeper lying three with um, more often than not Freeman and Paul Stokowski, the wider of the two. Okay, and yeah. that, that has been pretty successful in general. It's allowed us to, um, well, when it's working successfully, the tendency of the team is to go long and then try and push the whole side forward and establish those periods of possession in the opposition half. So you won't see us building from the back in our own half, but once we yeah. establish possession further up the field, they like to work it from side to side and try and kind of probe down the flanks. You'll see a lot of Piagiani 60-yard cross fields up to Wilding further up on the right-hand side mm. and Butler further up on the left-hand side. That's a way they like to try and probe and get crosses in for uh, Reed and Hemmings and... Uh, Roberts in and around and they like a high press as well so to try to pick up the ball high in the opponent's half now that may be more of a home thing than an away thing I imagine that tactic flexes somewhat. Yeah. Um, I see a lot more home matches than away matches and when you're listening on local radio you don't quite get that um, kind of yeah. feel for it so um, yeah that, that's kind of how I'd expect it to go I'd expect that 4-4-2 um, diamond formation to be uh, still in place unless uh, Steve has a real inkling about countering something that Lincoln are looking to do. Well, hopefully he doesn't uh, in that <laughs> sense. Um, look, we've mentioned, well, we've sort of skirted around Steve Evans a few times. Um, look, around. look I, I guess, well, I guess the the kind of question is, you know, as much as I'd love to turn around and say, why do you like, I mean, what do, are you appreciating what he's doing at the minute? And are you happy with him in charge? What's your kind of views as a Stevenish fan? Because you hear all of this kind of hyperbole from Lincoln fans and such about Steve Evans. But what's, from a Stevenish fan's point of view, happy with him as your head coach? I'll rewind it back to when he was first linked with the club and I was pretty anti the appointment because of the general impression I had of him as a manager from the Football League. He's belied a lot of that since he's come in i haven't seen that side of him too much and you get the odd little dig and you know he goes on about referees in almost every post-match interview so <laughs> i think we, we could live without that but i think in general he's a good fit for what stevenage need because mm. they're a side punching above their weight on a bottom quarter of the league wage budget you know against some really big sides in the division so mm. you need a manager who's gonna galvanize the squad together with the big also against their mentality and get everyone kind of putting the team ahead of themselves and, and putting it all out on the line every week and you know we had our 
biggest success before Evans as a club with Graham Wesley, who was a similar kind of mm. divisive figure, but the right man for a team like Stevenage to get the most out of what we've got. And uh, yeah, certainly he's been a lot less objectionable than I expected from his image pre joining the club. And, you know, so long as we're winning, fans of Pickle will uh, be happy with winning however it comes. <laughs> it's not it's not been the ugly, cynical brand of football you kind of expect from that mm. predefined image either. It's been, you know, it, it's not as bad as the uh, stereotype suggests, I don't think. Oh, well, that'd be interesting to kind of obviously see uh, on, on Saturday that side of it as well, then a, a lot more than obviously we've really been able to see before in terms of the play style. Um, look, there's what is it, 11 games left of the season? I think you've played the same amount of games as us, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll call it 11 games left of the season. In fact, no, you've played one less, 12 games left of the season for you. What's the kind of aim, realistic aim? Obviously, the, the optimistic aim will be, oh, we'll get a playoffs, we're winning the playoffs, and we're, you know, going up. But what's the kind of realistic aim for you guys in these final 12 games? Do you think that hitting playoffs is a proper realistic target at this point? It's got to be the minimum aim at this point when you're mm. sixth with a game in hand over seventh, eighth, and ninth, and tenth. And <laughs> level on points with Peterborough, with Peterborough still to play, although they do have a game in hand on this. It's looking too far to get into the top two. They're yeah. seven points clear, and you know, Portsmouth are even further ahead. And so, even though we have one game in hand on them, it's just they're not dropping points at a rate that you'd expect them to be able to drop behind enough people yeah. and you'd also have to hope of all the likes of Barnsley and Bolton who are both really strong teams <laughs> we've seen it before with Stevenage this season where we've had a chance in our own hands to establish a really comfortable playoff position and we've had a little stutter and dropped a few points and dropped down to like 7th, 8th and we've clawed our way back into it again and we need to this time really kind of knuckle down and not get that okay, we've made it, now we can have a little relax. There's no time to relax at the business end of the season and you've got to be mm. picking up points on the regular to stay ahead of all the other clubs who are picking up points on the very regular. So, yeah, um, I'm hoping we can haul ourselves past Peterborough and then give ourselves that one-place cushion that just makes you feel that a little bit more comfortable for the uh, last 10 games. And that gives space for you guys to come in and sit and we can see you at Wembley. I'm more than happy to get on board with that. Like, do you know what? Nothing would warm my heart more than to beat Steve Evans at Wembley to get <laughs> to the championship. <laughs> um, but look, if we've got any chance of being there, arguably, if you've got, if you want to improve your chances of getting there, it must start with a strong performance from either one of our sides on Saturday. So, score prediction. What are you going for, Pat? My money is on a one-all draw. I think Steve is going to play it pretty cagely because mm. we can settle for a point much more comfortably than you guys can. And with the two-point cushion we now have over Oxford United and a game in hand, mm. a point against a really strong, great form Lincoln side um, would be a really valuable one in the running. I think more sides are going to lose to you than beat you over the rest of the season. So... Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's what my money's on. Well, I'll be honest, I don't want to draw. Um, I think if we draw, kind of, it, it sort of quietens the conversations around the playoffs. And look, like I'm, I'm open and narrowing myself about whether it's possible, all of this, probably not, but it's still fun to dream. And so that on that, I'm going to go with a 2 0 home victory. I think it'll be a tight cagey game. I think we'll be able to get one goal in the first half shut up shop for a little bit. You guys try and come at us, but struggle to create too much. And then we get a second one later on. That's how I'm going to go in terms of the game go, but we'll see whether that actually does happen. For those of you that are going, obviously enjoy. I'll, I'll be down there. Come say hello. Uh, and yeah, let's really hope that at the end of the game, we are chanting, we're on our way once again. Thanks so much for joining me, Pat. Good luck for the rest of the season. Good luck for the rest of the season, obviously, after Saturday. <laughs> Same to you. Up the, up the imps.